Welcome to this Commander deck tech featuring Kefnet the Mindful, Group Hug Voltron. Kefnet the Mindful is a very big bird, an enormous 3-mana 5-5 with flying and indestructible. Unfortunately, he cannot attack or block unless you have 7 cards in hand, so he just floats there menacingly until you are worthy of his aid. He also has the activated ability to pay 4 mana to draw a card and possibly return a land to your hand which can help pass his trial and allow him to attack. Kefnet is cheap, indestructible, evasive, and already has extremely high stats. He is the perfect target to suit up in battle armor and swing for a 21 commander damage victory. Unlike the Theros gods, Kefnet never stops being a creature, so equipment and auras will stick on him even when he can't attack. For these reasons, Kefnet has the potential to be one of the strongest Voltron commanders in the game. The problem to solve in building a Kefnet deck is becoming worthy of him, getting 7 plus cards in hand by the time you want to attack. Blue is already the best color at drawing cards, but not quite good enough to eternally keep 7 cards in hand like Kefnet demands. The absolute most mana efficient card draw in the game is Symmetrical, commonly known as Group Hug cards. The deck contains a large amount of these symmetrical draw effects. Howling Mine is the cheapest, and the deck contains a few ways of tapping it to turn it off during enemy turns. Temple Bell can be used on the opponent's end step to use the drawn card before opponents get a chance. Kumina's Awakening and Jace Bellerin both have asymmetrical modes, so they won't always be helping opponents. Folio of Fancies can draw multiple cards each turn and gives no maximum hand size. Finally, no self-respecting commander deck would be complete without an awful Kamigawa card. This one has Kami of the Crescent Moon. The other easiest way to enable Kefnet is drawing 7 cards with one spell. Echo of Eons lets us do this twice with its flashback cost while game plan can potentially be very cheap in a multiplayer game. Midnight Clock acts as a decent mana rock until the clock strikes 12 and it draws 7 as well. These cards allow me to dump my hand on the battlefield freely, confident I can refill it whenever there is an opening to attack. Kefnet is already huge, but he's not quite big enough to defeat an opponent in one or two swings without some equipment. Since Kefnet already has protection and evasion built in, the equipment I've chosen focuses on power boosts. Black Blade Reforged, Inquisitor's Flail, Strata Scythe, and Imperial Plate all provide a lot of damage for cheap mana and equip costs. All of these group hug artifacts and equipment naturally lend themselves to an artifact theme in the deck. I've included several ways of taking advantage of the large artifact count. Blink Moth Urn gives incredible amounts of mana to use each turn, and any extra mana can easily be dumped into Kefnet's ability to draw more cards. With enough mana rocks, Unwinding Clock works the same way. Emery, Lurker of the Lock, can grab important artifacts out of the graveyard, and lets the deck spend mana while holding 7 cards in hand. Shimmer Dragon is difficult to remove and draws a lot of cards over time. It is also one of the few backup Voltron creatures in the deck. Normally, returning a land with Kefnet's activated ability is a desperate act to get 7 cards in hand. Being behind a land drop is usually not worth a Kefnet attack. However, Mystic Sanctuary is extremely useful to bounce to the hand and play again every turn, redrawing an instant or sorcery for next turn. I don't have any extra turn spells in this deck list but they do create an infinite turns loop with Kefnet and Mystic Sanctuary, so it's worth considering for your own deck. The rest of the deck is pretty standard mono blue. Way too many counter spells, a few classic draw spells, and a couple of board wipes, and plenty of mana rocks. I want to point out a few unique choices from these generic categories. Spell Rupture and Stubborn Denial are nominally weaker than other counter spells, but become very viable with a 5 power indestructible commander. Inspiring Statuary turns our equipment and utility artifacts into mana rocks, 
and can provide a lot of mana in a deck like this that plays an even mix of artifacts and non-artifact spells. The full deck list is available in the description. I recommend checking it out to see what other cool cards I used but did not mention in this video. Next video, I'll be talking about my Olivia Mobilized for War Reanimator deck. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the big bird.